Another lethargic morning has begun. Today I stand upon the stage of deception once again. This is how Black Heaven chooses to greet the viewer, and it embodies the tone of the series in more ways than one. Kasho Oji, Hard Rock Save the Space, otherwise known as the Legend of Black Heaven, is most famous for an award-winning anime music video made in 2007 that is almost completely unrelated to the actual series, and as of the making of this video has roughly 3 million views. Now, only 21,000 people actually acknowledge the show even exists on my anime list, and that's not factoring in how many have it set as completed or in progress or even dropped. However, I have seen references online and in printed material that considers the series to be a cult classic, and it did receive an updated box set in 2005 for the United States, after what I can only assume was a successful initial release in 2001. So, what is Kasho Oji, or Black Heaven, as it's sometimes referred to? It's a series that focuses upon the mundane life of Oji Tanaka, leading to the title of Kasho Oji, an aging salaryman who gave up his dreams of being a rock star to support his wife and child. At least, that's what it appears to be at first glance. But after a secretary at work starts taking a strange interest in him, his skills as a legendary musician are called back into action. So at first this sounds like some kind of slice of life, but there's some significant features that set this anime apart. The main character, Oji Tanaka, is middle aged, he has a wife and child to support. His youth as a wild rock star is but a fleeting memory, kept alive by his diminishing music collection and his final prized possession, a legendary Gibson Flying V. However, this doesn't make Oji any less relatable, on the contrary this makes him far more engaging than you'd realise. Oji is very human, he's a father who's willing to compromise. The rest of the cast sadly don't receive as much thought as Oji, but the narrative of this series is primarily driven by him and his decisions. Oji Tanaka discovers that his co-worker isn't actually desiring an illicit workspace affair, but rather she actually wants to enlist his musical talent in a battle to save the galaxy. Now Oji must manage his family, and especially his wife, his work, and get the band back together for one last cosmic concert to save all mankind, and keep it all hidden from the wife. However, this show is also more than a musical space opera. It's a commentary on what it means to be a father, on rekindling your youth and commitment to your responsibilities. The plot is decent, but lacking. The juxtaposition of a mundane office worker and a space opera makes for an interesting premise, but as this is Oji Tanaka's story, we only get to see the salaryman side of it. Looking back upon the series, I find it hard to remember anything notable about the space battles or the enemies at all, and there's not much explanation given as to why they even need to fight in the first place. But this isn't that detrimental to the series as it sounds. Instead, Black Heaven imitates aspects of more famous shows like FLCL, or Furikuri, with the show employing both literal and allegorical storytelling techniques. Thus we could imagine that the whole space opera was nothing but an allegory for Oji's experiences, externalising his inner conflicts through a metaphysical environment that conveys his turmoil and triumph to the viewers. This concept is honestly much more interesting to me, giving the show two sides, one of a hapless salaryman recruited to fight an intergalactic war with only his guitar, and the other of a father coming to terms with his vapid lifestyle, reconnecting with his youth, and coming out of a midlife crisis as a stronger man and a stronger parent. Alongside OG, the other most prominent character is the mysterious secretary and special agent, Leila Yuki, who represents the antithesis of OG's wife. She is wild and carefree, a callback to the women of OG's past. Her escapades of OG only serve to incriminate him further, and as the series progresses, it becomes clear that OG's attraction to her represents his desire to return to his youth, representing a return to that hedonistic lifestyle without kids, mortgages, or any other kind of responsibilities except playing rock and roll and having fun. But she's also an alien and with her rather direct nature, as well as general misunderstanding of regular life and general societal conventions, make for a great source of comedy through unintentional innuendos and pure slapstick. The show has a lot to say about being a parent, especially a father, but also about marriage and being a good husband and wife. 
OG cut short his promising career as a rock star to be able to care for his son and his wife, a decision that ultimately sent him down the path of becoming another shirt and tie in another cubicle in another office building. His work ethic is lacking, and his commute is long and complicated. He has to get up hours before the rest of the family, and comes home far too late to have dinner with any of them. If any of your parents have ever had or have a job like this, I'd like you to pause the video and go give them a hug. Now, he's by no means unskilled, even his boss is willing to admit that, but the company prefers practicality to passion at the end of the day. Now, as we enter the 2020s, this style of dead-end office employment is disappearing. The grey plastic towers that once dominated studies and workplaces across the globe are now relegated to second-hand stores and enthusiast forums. Soon, the OG Tanakas of this world will be characterised by another form of soul-crushing employment, but that's not for me to decide or to elaborate upon in this video. Now, let's take a look at the technical. This series has one very fancy name behind it, that being the world-renowned guitarist John Sykes, or more specifically, his 1997 hit Cautionary Warning, which was in the end a very expensive decision and therefore the rest of the team aren't particularly famous. Now, the director, Kikuchi Yasuhito, was essentially a no-name until recently, with his work on the series That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Now, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure you in the comments know a lot more about it than I do. The other notable names on this list, and also appearing on an advertisement for the 2005 set that claims the series is a cult classic, is the famous artist Kazuto Nakazawa as the lead character designer, famous for his work on the animated segment of Kill Bill Part 1, the Linkin Park music videos, I'm not kidding, this is exactly what it says on the 2005 box set, and Samurai Champloo. Now, the show originally aired on TV in the summer of 1999, and it's from that weird part of anime where companies were using both traditional and digital techniques. So if you compare Black Heaven to other shows from the same period, it's clear to see that the digital colouring was rather a budgetary choice, and not anything experimental. It's not great looking, but there's some great bits of animation for specifically when the band all play their respective instruments, and the OP animation is very unique and clearly designed or reminiscent of the animated part of Kill Bill. A little interruption here. I've been gone for quite some time, and I apologise. I've been through a lot. I started and finished both my first and second year of university. In fact, I'm recording this right now after receiving my results. For my second year. The previous footage and audio was all recorded on and off between now and the initial Black Heaven teaser video. I decided to finally finish this video after Discotech announced their Black Heaven Blu-ray release, which has subsequently come out. Weirdly enough, shortly after I finished my now taken down video on Kyo Kare Ore Wa, which is still available for viewing on BitChute and Vimeo and in a muted form on YouTube, that also received a Blu-ray release, albeit a Japan only one. But a pretty good release, so, you know, it's good. Following the success of the 2018 live-action adaptation, which was also quite good. Now, I can't vouch for Discotech's release, as they don't operate in my region. I've never seen anything from it. I don't have any Discotech stuff. I mean, I may have probably pilfered or um, borrowed some Discotech uh, releases over the years, but I have no idea if they were or were not from Discotech. But, um... A modern release for the series is appreciated nonetheless, however that may exclude the series from being anime obscure territory, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. But then again, Kyokara Orewa is absolutely not obscure in Japan. Uh, back to my thoughts on the series. I still agree with what I said when I started writing this video, but I would uh, hesitate to consider it um, one of the best. I set out to do a lot more with this video than I should have, and at the time of planning, I was intending for it to be a Father's Day gift. And then, when I missed that deadline due to other commitments, I kept putting it on, and off, and off, and then eventually, uh, I only started working on it again this year, which has been, you know, quite some time. Uh, when I first started this series, I initially watched it over a couple of beers with a friend when I was about 20, 19-ish years old, you know, left school and working and looking for just something to do with my life. So not really a midlife crisis, but uh, I feel like if you watch this series and you were having a midlife crisis, you probably wouldn't feel too good. Uh, I still think this series um, 
will never be considered one of the greats, but from the early digital period in which it came out, the series does stand out with its charm and appreciation of the everyman, the father, the uh, salaryman, which will be slowly disappearing from Japanese anime, as salarymen uh, don't watch anime, and the people won't grow up to be salarymen anymore, or if they do, they'll probably have much more interesting and better interests than anime. I don't know what anime figures are for viewing in Japan anymore, but I can imagine it's been considerably lower since this series came out. And when this series came out, I imagine if it came out now, barely any of the demographics it reached in what 2001, 1999 would have um, would be watching it today. Ultimately, Oji Tanaka realizes that he can't rekindle his youth but that he isn't alone with this desire or as a person, and with the eventual participation of his family and his old friends, he can move on from his past and pursue greater and more important ambitions for himself and those he holds dear. And that's uh, my video on Kasho OG Hard Rock Save the Space. Uh, glad you guys liked um, the last two videos. It's a shame about Kyoko Arawa. I was really happy with the about 900 views it got before it got taken down but uh, someone said in the comments for the uh, the re-upload uh, someone read the entirety of the manga which i'm really happy about if you like that i strongly recommend checking out the series roku danashi blues and bebop high school uh, they both have anime adaptations but uh, i don't think the roku danashi blues adaptation is subbed and the manga is still being translated it's very old uh it's got about maybe 20 volumes left it's about 40 volumes i've read half of it uh bebop high school uh the anime for that is fully subbed it was subbed by the same people who subbed kyo kare ore wa i'll probably do a video on that some other day i don't want to do some i don't want to be a delinquent anime channel i like delinquent anime but not because their high school is beating each other up but because of the other themes and the distinct differences they tend to have especially as um the author of bebop high school uh, the manga for him was just him retelling the stuff that he and his friends got up to when they were kids. Just uh, the shit they did, mistakes they made, fights, girls, all that stuff. And it's, you know, a long spiraling treatise on what it's like being uh, a not so well-to-do teenager in, um, I guess, bubble period Japan. Oh uh, yeah, so if you like the series, uh, if you want me to do anything else, uh, I might start doing questions and answers in the comments. I don't know what I want to do with this channel. Uh, I was thinking of doing regular film reviews. I've watched a ton of movies since uh, the last video. I I've genuinely seen maybe like uh, 50, 60, uh, maybe more films since then. Um, maybe I'll make a Twitter or something. I also have a Tumblr where I just uh, reblog GIFs from old shows. Occasionally you can tell what I'm thinking about or what I want to watch. Um, anime wise, I haven't watched anything too good recently. I watched an old, not an old series, a new series, shockingly enough, called um, Jujutsu Kaisen. And the thing I noticed the most is the two main characters are pretty much uh, inspired by almost rip-offs, but clearly not, of uh, Ito and Mitsuhashi from Kyo Kare Ore Wa, which was interesting and funny as the people I watched Jujutsu Kaisen with had no clue what uh, Kyokare Orewa even was and so they didn't understand my reference. But uh, if you've watched it and you're a fan of me, Anime Obscura, then you'll know. And that's what matters. Uh, and with that, um, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Uh, I would say support the official release because this actually does have one. But um, I don't know. If this video gets taken down, uh, just pirate it. I don't care. Bye.